Hey there! Thank you so much for joining us at Rock Creek Family Church. We've got some exciting announcements today. Whether you're new or a returning guest, you are already a part of the family. But we want to get to know you more, and we hope that you want to get to know us more. So if that's you, if you're ready for that next step, would you go and fill out a card? You can fill it out in person, or you can scan the QR code on the back of the card and fill out a Connect card online. Thank you so much. We can't wait to connect with you. Did you know there are three ways to give? You can give by mail, you can give online by going to our website, or you can give by coming down to the front of the sanctuary and dropping your gift into one of the offering plates. We are so blessed by your generosity, and we are so thankful that you have decided to sow seeds here at Rock Creek Family Church. We're excited to announce that on August 19th, we will start our Kingdom Kids Conference. This is open to all kids between the ages of 6 and 12. So if you've got kids or you know someone who has kids in that age group, make sure that they know about this. August 19th, starting at 5.30, you don't want to miss it. And the second day of our conference will be August 20th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. We are excited and cannot wait to bless your kids and help them grow deeper in their relationship with God. All right, that completes our announcements for today. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, we want to connect with you. So if you want to get involved or if there's anything you need, feel free to reach out to us. And if you missed any of these announcements, you can always go find them at our website at rockcreekfamilychurch.com slash info. Thank you. Now let's worship. Good morning, good morning. Welcome, Rock Creek Family Church. How are you guys? You good? Good? All right. Well, I've got a confession to make. Already starting out with a confession. I don't know what's going to happen today. I, uh, I really feel the Spirit of God in this place today, and I hope that you came ready to receive, ready to be encountered by God today. That's, that's what we're here for. And so I hope, hope you came ready. I hope you came excited. Before we get into all that, though, Kingdom, Kingdom Kids Conference, if you know any kids in that age group, 6 to 12, get them here. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have an amazing time. And kids need an opportunity. They need a place where they can come and be around other kids and just have an opportunity to learn about God, learn about the love of God. We can always have more love, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to share this scripture with you. You guys, I think just about everybody here will have heard this story, will know this story. It's a powerful one, and it's just kind of been on my mind lately. This is, uh, Jesus has sent the disciples, and uh, they're in a boat out in the water, like a lot of times they are. We pick up here in Matthew chapter 14. It says, during the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, crying out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come, and I will come to you. And Jesus said, Come. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came towards Jesus. That right there, just absolutely amazing. That that moment took place where Jesus stepped out on the, or man, sorry, where Peter stepped out on the water and walked as Jesus did on the water just for a moment. Then Peter, he saw the winds and was afraid and began to sink and cry out, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus reached out and caught him. He said, You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And then when he climbed back into the boat and the wind died down, those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. I wanted to share this scripture today because I feel like there's been such an invitation the last few weeks. God's been inviting us to enter in, to go deeper, to come closer, to know him more. And I feel like what God is saying today, would you just step out of the boat? Just step out of the boat. Just take a step. You don't got to have a lot of faith, but if you got a little bit of faith, just step out and see what will happen. And yeah, if you fall, that's okay, because Jesus is going to pick you right back up, and he's not going to hesitate. It says immediately he reached out and picked Peter back up. 
So I want to encourage you. Would you go ahead and stand as we get ready to worship? I want to encourage you today in worship just to be open and allow God's presence to move, allow God's presence to encounter you today. Don't be afraid to step out, to reach out, to call on God because he's here in this place. Father God, we come before you today, God, ready to receive what you have in store for us today, Lord God. Lord, we pray that your spirit would move in this place today, God. God, that we would meet you right here, right now in this place today. God, help us to be bold. Just take a step out of the boat this morning, God. Help us to be bold and courageous, Lord God, to reach out to you today. God, help us to see that it doesn't matter if we don't have a lot of faith, God, but if we would just reach out, you'll be right there. You'll be there to catch us. You'll be there to pick us back up if we fall, Lord. We come before you today ready to encounter you. Lord, we love you. Fill this place today, Lord. Fill this place with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship.
For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no
the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God.
so good. Would you just stay in that posture just for a moment? God, your love is so great. It's so great. It's so great. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. separate me from your love. Nothing I ever do, nothing I ever did, Lord. Nothing. God wants you to know today that nothing, you name it, it it's nothing compared to his love. And you shall never be separated from Oh, Holy Spirit, we love you and we thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you for the love of God. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand this morning. Hallelujah. Father, I pray over everyone in this building today. God, that you would touch them in a way that only you can, Father. Deep, deep inside. Deep down inside of them. I pray, Father, that you dig past all of the barriers and the clutter and the dust and the stuff that we have collected in our life and Get down to it, Lord. Just get down to it. Lord, it's, it's getting too late in the day to be playing games. It's getting too late in the hour. The season is here. Whether you want to believe it or you want to hide from it, the season is here. It's time. Now is that time to get real with Him and let Him get real with us. So, Father, I pray that whatever's getting in the way, can we pray a bold prayer? Is there anybody here today that has enough faith to pray a bold prayer with me? Okay, well, first of all, how many of you believe He answers prayers? All right, there's a few of us here. The rest of us are just kind of hanging out, and we're going to see. We're going to wait, and we're going to see. But how many of you have faith that says that He is going to answer prayers? All right, that's about the same amount. How many of you have faith? He really is going to answer prayers. 
I'd have to ask you then why are you here if you don't believe it right if you believe he's going to answer this prayer then don't pray it unless you're serious but if you're serious then join with me as I step out of the boat Father Whatever is in my life that is getting in the way of seeing your glory move, whatever it is in my life that is keeping me from Apostle Paul's prayer of being fully, not fully. And Father, I pray by the immersion of the Holy Spirit that you would flood me in my life in such a way that you get out of the way whatever is there. Oh, I think I only had about two people pray that with me. Well, then two people are going to turn this church upside down. Father, do it. Do it, Lord. Whatever's holding me back, do it. I echo the words of your Son, Lord God, and said, loose them and let them go. I've got a donkey on which I need to ride. Loose them. Let them go. Father, I pray over everyone in this building today. Whatever's holding them back, I ask God that you loose them. Let them go. I ask, Father, that you would use them. I ask, Lord, that you would help them to hear an invitation from the voice of the living God that says, Come up higher. Let me show you some things. Father, I pray that we would move past the veil, go deeper into your holy of holies, step into your secret place, see you face to face. Because Lord, if you truly are looking for someone in this day, in this hour, in this season to worship you, then Lord, look my way. Look right here, Lord. Look. Look this way. Turn your eyes upon me. I'll worship you, Lord. I'll worship you in front of a crowd. I'll worship you in a secret place. I'll I'll worship you in the up. I'll worship you in the down. I'll worship you in the waiting. I'll worship you when the door opens. I'll worship you when the door shuts. I'll I'll worship you, Lord. I'll I'll worship you. If you're looking for spirit and in truth, then my spirit groans for you. And I truly need you and I truly worship you. Father, have your way. Have your way, Jesus.
Maybe there's somebody here who's just not satisfied. <laughs> Maybe, Lord, there's somebody here who's willing to turn their back on the crowd and step back into the secret place. Maybe there's somebody here that would rather hear the whisper from the Almighty than the roar of the world. Maybe there's somebody here who says, I'm a presence person maybe there's somebody here who is longing for something more and something deeper and something greater Father I pray over that person that you light them up with the fire straight from the altar of heaven Jesus, send your comforter to us today. Heal the brokenhearted. Set at liberty those who are held captive. Open blinded eyes. Unstop deaf ears. In fact, I want to pray over it. Somebody is desperately wanting just to hear from God about something. In Jesus' name, your ears unstop today. In Jesus' name, your ear is unstopped today. Listen. Listen to Him. Listen to Him. Father, I pray today that you have your way in this house with this people. You're building something great here, Lord, and It's a privilege to be a part of it. Thank you, Lord, for all you do. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Lord, I pray for our hearts just to be stirred toward you. Forgive me, Lord, for the many things that fall so short of your glory that they're in in the way in my life I pray that you wash them by your blood and resurrect them by your spirit thank you Lord thank you in advance for doing it said I praise you in advance for doing it and I praise you in advance for doing it I praise you in advance for doing it Lord And if you join with me in that praise, would you say a big amen? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here today. Hallelujah. So good to have you this morning. We're going to go ahead and go to take up the offering. So if you have your offering... Let's go ahead and get that, and let's bless that, and we'll bring it up here. If you have your offering, let's get that. Father, we love you, we thank you. Every dollar is yours. With a heart of gratitude, I give every dollar that I have to this. Everything, Lord, is all yours. So I pray that it would reflect your glory. That what seed of faith we place in this offering today would reflect your glory operating in our lives. Father, that you would take the heart of the widow's mites and you would take it and bless it and move with it and move mountains with it, do incredible words with it because you said if we would just sow our seed of faith into good soil, you would produce a harvest. So we ask, Lord, 
We ask, Lord, that we see that with our eyes today. A harvest. A harvest, Lord. Move us, Lord, in that direction. Pray over every dollar and over every heart and hand that's able to give today. Pour back into it a blessing. A blessing, Lord, upon homes, upon lives, upon families, upon Thank you, Lord. Father, we ask you to be God of every aspect of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can bring your offering up now if you have that. good guys thank you so much as you're being seated and some of you already beat me to it good job children's church you're ready to go every time I see that I think of the movie Crudes where he says release the baby <laughs> all right good to see everybody here today. Thank you for being here. We love you so much and we appreciate you spending your time and your Sunday with us together. Of course, most importantly, we appreciate you spending your time just hungering for God. Just hungering and needing God move in your, to move in your life. And I've often found in my life when I hungered for Him, He never, ever turned away from me. When I really, truly wanted him and needed him and searched for him, I found him. And I mean that as in getting past all the excuses that would keep us from that. Because there are a lot. <laughs> Anybody here know what I'm talking about? The excuses are plentiful, that is for sure. Their excuses are kind of like rocks around here. You go to digging and doing something, you better get ready to do it with some rocks in the way. But you just got to have enough fortitude in your mind to say, I'm going to go forward and do this anyways. We're going to go today to the book of Matthew, chapter 10. And we're going to kind of stay in our lesson about staying we're just going to stay here for a little bit. I don't know how many more weeks, but God deals with me from week to week. And this one, He said, just stay. That's what we're going to do because uh, there, there's, there, there's, there's so much flight going on right now that we need to just take a step back and say, God, I know that, that, that while the air traffic control is busy, I'm just going to stay right here and I'm going to listen to you, and I'm going to draw close to you. I uh, am right now in the middle of doing some premarital counseling with a couple from Colorado, and, and they are, are really hungry just to see God move in their upcoming marriage and, their, and in their relationship. And, you know, I told them that there's, there's no magic button to push when it comes to a good marriage that, Anybody that you see that has a good marriage, there's a lot of work put to that. I'm glad a couple of the guys weren't afraid enough to say amen. There's a lot of work to that. You should see the amount of work Stephanie has to do with this right here on a daily basis. There's a lot of work to it. There's a lot of energetic work to it. There's a lot of purposeful work to it. Basically what that means is you have to come to a point in your life where you just say, come hell or high water, I'm willing to do this. And I'm going to stick with this. It may not always feel like it's supposed to feel, but I'm, I'm going to stick with this. And I'm going to make up in my mind I'm going to go forward with this. And no matter what, this is what I'm going to do. And we have to be that way with our worship as well. Because there's a lot of stuff out there that wants to steal your peace. 
There's a lot of stuff out there that wants to clutter your mind. I have never, I feel like I'm 90 years old saying this, but I have never seen a time in ministry where everybody's mind is so almost like it's aggravated and irritated and frustrated and anxious and fearful and even doubtful and I've never seen such a time I've been in ministry 26 years and I've never seen a time like it is right now where everybody just seems to be kind of like right there on the edge of being from by, being fine to being like crazy frustrated irritated so quickly so easily well you want to know what I think is one of the things that's irritating our spirit and irritating our mind it's it's some dust some dust. Some dust is collected in our life. And we're going to talk about what to do with that dust here in just a second. So, Matthew chapter 10. As you're turning there, I do have a, couple, a quick announcement I want to make sure that I get out before I get way ahead of myself. And that is, all the ladies that's been going to the ladies' ministry meeting and or ladies that want to uh, be prepared to go to the next ladies' ministry meeting, which is coming up soon, See me real quickly right after service, just right up front, right here. I just want to talk with every, all the ladies and, and uh, tell everybody the plan as we go forward and what God is doing with that. So thankful that God has been moving in that, and, and uh, we're going to just continue to put that in God's hands and let Him do what He's going to do with it. And the ladies said, I expected a little more gusto, but that's okay. Ladies, we're going to... We're going to see God continue to move. We are. We are. So we're going to meet real quick, ladies, right after service. All right. Matthew chapter 10. We're going to start reading at verse 5. We've got a little bit to read to you today. Hopefully you'll stay awake long enough. But I will say, hey, good job, worship band. Y'all kept them going for so long that... that uh, my sermon doesn't have to be nearly as long. That ought to excite somebody. Matthew chapter 10. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 10, starting verse 5. You've got to say, I got it. Say it with swagger. I got it. These 12 Jesus sent out. And he commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter into a city of the Samaritans. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, now freely pour it out. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belt. Some of you say that's easier for some of us than it is for others, right? Yeah, there you go. Uh, don't provide a bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food. And Turn to your neighbor and say, and I like to eat. Let me all look. Thank you. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy. And stay there till it's time for you to leave. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can we back, just back the boat up for just about half a second? Who has the peace in that situation? The house or the one entering the house? When God gave his disciples authority to do what he's asking them to do, he also gave them a peace, a confidence, a confidence with that. And it's a confidence in such a way where you don't have to have your circumstance give you confidence for you to have confidence. You don't have to have everything working out perfectly for you to have peace because you've already got it. You have it. It's in your possession. 
You have a spirit of peace according to the book of Galatians. You have a fruit of peace. You have that. It is, it is part of you. It's in you. It's with you. It's through you. You have it. So don't let anybody steal it. Don't let anybody take it. Oh, the enemy will try. He will try. Jesus gave him a warning. He said, hey, someone will try to come in and bind the strong man and then take what you got. But the good news is, Jesus is your strong man. See, someone can't come into my house and take my stuff unless he first binds the strong man of the house and puts me in a an ability where I can't do anything about it. We serve a Savior today that's already been bound and broke those, bo- broke those bonds. We serve a Savior today that has already been placed in the grave and He came out of that. We serve a Savior today that's already been tried and tested and tricked, but He didn't fall for any of it. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, is You have peace today. And you have it because Christ is in you and He's the one holding it. That it's not even completely up to you. He has it. And if Satan couldn't bind Him while He was here, then He still can't bind Him because He's still here. Right? So the only thing the enemy can do is trick you into giving it away. The only thing he can do is trick you into allowing yourself to talk yourself out of it and and letting yourself be overcome by other things. You have that peace. Verse 13 says, And if the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it's not worthy, let that peace return back to you. And whoever will not receive you, nor hear your words when you depart from the house or the city. Shake off the dust from your feet. It's time to do some dusting. Assuredly, now when Jesus says, I know I'm reading New King James, yours may be a little bit different, but when Jesus, when he says assuredly, Jesus is saying that not to say, "Mm, I hope this works out. (laughs) Maybe. Possibly, no, he's saying, if Jesus is assured of it, then should not we be? Surely, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. That's, if you know your OT history, that's some pretty serious stuff, right? So today we're going to talk about how dusty shoes sometimes can lead to dirty minds. We're going to shake this dust off. And some of you just need to be reminded that some of the things that's happened to you in your past by some, maybe you've gone through some rejection, maybe you've gone through some hurt, maybe you've gone through some trouble, maybe you've gone through some stuff you didn't ask for, maybe you've been having to deal with things that you were born into, maybe you just went through something. Even even in a religious way, you went through something, you were like, I don't even know, didn't ask for it, but I had to go through that. And if you're not careful, going through that and going through that rejection, if you hold on to that, it's like dust that collects inside of your mind and it irritates your spirit and you're not able to be free to hear what he wants to say and do what he wants to do completely until that dust is shaken out. We're going to shake some dust out today, Maybe there's one or two people in here that's gone through some stuff and every once in a while the enemy tries to use it to stir some stuff up in your mind and clutter you up a little bit. We're going to, by the presence of the Holy Spirit, shake it out today. We're going to shake it off, right? We're going to shake it off. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you, God, that you are with us today in a very special way. I knew last night as I was praying over this service, you'd be here in a special, special way today. And I think you're not finished. I don't think you're quite finished today. So I pray that you do what you need to do. Go forth. Lead on. Press forward. 
and I'll follow. Together, Lord, as you are shepherd and me, you're under shepherd, let's feed your people today. Let's feed some hungry sheep. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Jesus calls his disciples together here, and this is even before the anointing of the Holy Spirit falls on them in Acts chapter 2. So that just lets you know the Spirit's moving and his will is going forward and he's taking his disciples step by step. Um, I, I liken the three years of ministry that he takes his disciples through. It's kind of like the seminary school, if you will. Um, it's kind of like Jesus taking his disciples through a, some tests and some trials and some practices and some principles and some runs to take them through all of that and show them, hey, this is how things need to be done and when I'm gone, I'm going to empower you to do that even that much more. That's why right here in this season of their life he said do not go out to the gentiles do not go to the samaritans now later whenever he says with the great commission that you're going to baptize and make disciples he says then from that point go everywhere right go to jerusalem judea and then go to the rest of the world so the season was coming for them to do big things on a bigger stage but right now, Jesus said, I want you to handle this first. Uh, I want you to go through this first because I want to teach you a very valuable lesson that I think even we in this day and time really need to learn and need to know and need to hold on to. And that is how to handle it whenever the world doesn't exactly treat you as kindly as you ought to be treated. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Right? Because you're going to go through some stuff. All right. I, there's, right? You're going to go through some things. You're going to be treated in some ways. You're, in fact, sometimes those that are anointed and sanctified for God's use, sometimes they stick out like a sore thumb in a Sore thumb gets hung on some stuff. You know what I mean? You're going to go through some things. And the better you know how to handle that, the stronger your faith is going to be. The better you learn how to handle rejection, the stronger your faith is going to be. The better you learn how to handle all of the clutter and the noise of this world, the better your faith is going to be. My question is, is, is there anything, any dust cluttering up your mind today? Is there anything from the past that just keeps holding on to you? Any, any, any cobwebs up there? Any dust that tends to hold on? Any hurts from the past that you just kind of think, God, I'm just ready to get over that. Jesus says, I'm going to teach you how to get over this. And so we're going to look here what he taught his disciples. We're going to dig into this a little bit. And we're going to see what he taught his disciples will still work for us today. And it's more than just principles. This is more than just a list of do's and don'ts. That's what I love about our, our Savior. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. It's, it's not just a list of do's or don'ts. This is Jesus saying, let me walk with you through this. So what you got to do is just stay with Him. Right? Just, just keep your peace and stay with Him. And move forward. We'll talk a little more about that. But first I want to kind of talk a little bit about the dust. How many of you all... Uh, like the dust, right? Or maybe you're like me when you see dust on the, the cleaning sheet. You kind of go, uh, let me look first to see if it needs it. And you go, nah, it's all right. Sorry. <laughs> she sees dust and dirt and stuff I don't see. It's just a woman thing, Right? Unfortunately, I think my children got the same disease. Because you'll walk in and trip over stuff, and you're like, what is all this? And they're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what do 
it's fine to me. Right? <laughs> Dust. I looked up a, um, a definition of dust to see what all dust was made from. And I looked up an analytical chemistry website. It's called cnen.com. And they write, and I quote, Dust is more than just dirt. House dust is a mix of sloughed off skin cells, dead hair cells, clothing fibers, Bacteria, dust mites, pet dander if you have pets, bits of dead bugs, soil particles, pollen, and microscopic specks of even plastic and contaminants. And that make you feel good. <laughs> they go on to say, for one thing, dust is far from inert. Those shed hairs and old skin cells can actually soak up a constellation of contaminants originating from consumer products that we bring into our homes on a daily basis. Other environmental contaminants can also be tracked indoors from our clothes and the soles of our shoes. So that's permission for now on. Everybody just get naked when you walk in the building, right? We're going we're gonna to build a house, a new house, and we're going to put a shower between the garage in the house, right? So you just like walk through like a car wash, right? So in addition to the fluffy hair and garden dirt, dust can actually hold what they call a witch's brew of persistent organic pollutants, metals, endocrine disruptors, and even more. Now here's the part I really want to get to you because I know you're all like, great, I'm going to go home and dust now. Not only does dust hold a long memory of contaminants and can introduce it to your house. But it's also a continual source of exposure for the residents. What he's saying is, is that dust holds a memory of contaminants of the things that you've been through. That dust holds a memory of all of the junk you've picked up along the way. Maybe that's one reason why Jesus said don't take a lot of extra stuff because you're just going to pick up more junk with it. Just, just let Jesus work in this because he's saying, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I don't want it to cause a continual exposure to your life. In fact, they say for most people that dust, they don't really dust appropriately. All they do is stir it up, and they don't ever really do anything with it. Thanks to this sermon, we're going to buy a rainbow vacuum cleaner now. <laughs> what he's saying is, that's why Jesus is saying, listen, when you go into a place, and you're going to be going into some places, and you've got to test to see if it's worthy. Now, how do we handle that in today's world? Here's how we handle it in today's world. There's a work for you to do. There's a life for you to live. And a journey of faith for you to walk out. And unfortunately, that journey is going to cross paths with many different things that's going to try to suck you dry. Many different things that's going to be parasitic on your faith. Some relationships some situations, some things we have control over, some things we do not. Jesus said it in another way, don't cast your pearls before the swine. Because there's going to be some people that will absolutely not recognize the kingdom of God that's operating in your life. And they will not work with that, they will actually work against that. And it took a long time for me to mature enough in my faith to realize that. I'm, I'm kind of one of those people, I just give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I'm kind of a, a nice guy that way. And, and then I realized that there are some people out there that they will use and abuse you and every gift you have. And I've had to learn how to not cast my pearls 
before them. I didn't say that if they didn't come to me and needed help that I wouldn't help them. I didn't say I wouldn't pray for them. I didn't say that, that I wouldn't invite them to be a part of what the kingdom of God is doing. But when the kingdom of God is working and they continually reject that, that's when Jesus says, I give you permission to say, peace, come here. Peace, come here. Peace, get, get, come back. I give you permission and authority to say that your peace can return back to you. Now, if Jesus is working the way Jesus is working, if he tells his disciples to pour that peace out into the place or the relationship or the circumstance or the situation or whatever it is, then he's telling you to pour out so that you can get back even more than you've poured out. That's the way God works. Is it or is it not a joyous blessing to pour out the kingdom of God into somebody's life and you just get double blessed when they, when they receive it and, and it's just like, oh, this is how it works, right? I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, why are we here? Right? So he's saying how it's supposed to work is that you give, it'll get given back to you. I got that handled. But if you give and it's rejected, then you take it back. You get it back. You return to cinder, baby. Just, just get, get it back and say, fine, I'm going to take my ball and go play somewhere else. And you have permission to do that. Now, this doesn't mean that we as Christians are called to be uppity and snobbish. and That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about there's spiritual warfare out there. And there is legitimately an enemy that is wanting to devour you. And he devours you from the inside out. He devours you. And this is kind of gross. I know I've grossed y'all out today, but you're welcome. He devours you like one of those brain-eating amoebas. Have y'all heard about those? Those are like scary. They're like... Now when I swim in the lake, I put like a clothespin on my nose. They're, they're scared that you don't even know. All of a sudden, you've ingested something inside of you, and it goes to your brain, and it's from the inside out. It starts messing you up, and it starts messing in with the firing of your brain and the synapses, and then it becomes a sickness on the inside of you. And I'm telling you, we live in a world right now where the enemy is on a daily basis trying to combat your brain get you to curse your own self think about this if I go into a situation and I cast my peace I say peace over this a blessing over this which first of all tells you the kind of power you have you have the ability to bless a situation you realize that do you do you do that do you do you hold that accountability and responsibility do, do you hold that forthwith in doing that energetically and emphatically do you bless everywhere you go I know I bless Walmart at least six times a week right. do you do that you have that capability you have that ability but then he also says that when you refuse to do it God's way and when you get frustrated you get mad and you just walk out saying just forget it and you don't get the peace back what have you done to your peace you've left it for the enemy to use and abuse you've kept it in the hands of the enemy you've kept it in the hands of people who do not value or situations that do not value the kingdom of God do not value what the Holy Spirit is doing do not care about the kingdom of God says get it back why because he doesn't want that to leave a vacancy in your mind for the enemy to slip in and let dust settle when I was describing dust basically what I'm describing is dead stuff decaying dead stuff and God is trying to tell you I'm giving you the anointing to let the dead bury the dead that you can step out of that death 
and you can shake the dust off of your feet as if to say there is nothing back there that will hold me back from receiving what God has for me in the next step of my life. I don't have to carry that contaminant with me any longer. Now, I can learn from it. right? I can learn from it. And I will learn from it. But I don't have to carry it with me. I don't have to carry that burden. My burden is a burden of peace. Isn't that what Jesus said? Take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy and my burden is, is light. Take that. The key I've learned, and we find here, the key to shaking off the dust is learning to do three things. Number one, speak life. You've got to learn how to speak life. And I'm not talking about a name it, claim it thing. I'm not talking about, you know, go to Alan Tillery and pick which car you want. And if you, if you speak it hard enough, he'll give it to you for free. He may run you off because you're, dri- you're driving him crazy, but I'm not asking. I'm not talking about naming or claim because we put so much stock in stuff sometimes. And God wants to bless you with stuff. That's that's nothing wrong with that. But we have first realized what what we're our main goal is spiritual here, right? So He says, first thing you do is speak life, right? He says, speak blessing. If they don't receive it, speak it back to yourself. Speak life, because you have to combat word with word. Is that not what Jesus did in the wilderness? And the enemy came to steal and get that out of there and get him to do pervertedly what he was sent to do holy. What he was sent to do in a righteous way, the enemy said, let's pervert it and let's try to do it my way and do it differently and do it the way of the world. Let's, let's pervert this. And this is why I said dusty feet will lead to a dirty mind. The enemy wants to pervert you and use you, the vessel that you are, a vessel of, that's holy and sanctified, and use you to party in his own kingdom. And God will not stand for that. Read Daniel 5. Read Daniel 5 and you'll see God does not stand for having His vessels used and abused and perverted in a way that it was not intended to do. Homework. Go read Daniel 5. We don't have time today. I was going to do it, but we don't have time. So you have to learn to combat word with word. And and I know this sounds super simple, but if I were to tell you how many times a day I combat this negative, dusty junk in my mind, how many times a day I combat that with life, with worship, with praise, with the word of God, with something positive, it would blow you away. Because my mind is always on offense because the enemy is always trying to attack it somebody say amen but I've come to the place just like a good marriage I've said this is God's will then it's my will and if I have to say it 7,000 times a day I'll say it I would rather do that than succumb to a dusty dirty mind speak Life. You've been given authority to speak life. You've been given authority to have that peace. You've been given authority to that. And guess what? The world didn't give it to you and the world cannot take it away. It's been given to you by God and so the world can't take it unless you hand it to them. It's given to you. Put fear and rejection Put it back where it belongs and that would be under your feet. Where it becomes a stepping stone instead of a stumbling block. Something crazy happened to me many, many moons ago. For a while it became a stumbling block. And it was hard to get over at first. Until I realized that that right there was not what gives me peace. I already have it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I have it. In the power of the Holy Spirit, I have it. By the blood of the Lamb, I have it. That's part of the promise. 
So I'm going to refuse to give it to someone who's not going to treat it with the same respect. Matthew 10, we're not going to go there, I'm just going to kind of paraphrase it. But if you go on to Matthew 10, verses 19 and 20, he tells his disciples that you're going to deal with some stuff. You're going to go through some rejection, you're going to go through some offenses, you're going to go through some hard times. But he says, don't worry. Don't worry, because the Holy Spirit will give you what to say when you get there. So that goes to show you how powerful speaking words of life. How powerful words can be when you face the darkness. Words will cause chaos to come into order. Words of God and words of Christ will cause those things that are not to be. Look at Genesis. It was chaos. And had God not stepped out and put an order to it by what? The spoken word, where would we be today? That's why the Bible says God does everything in order. Right? Speak. But you've got to learn to watch your mouth. You want me to go for another 30 minutes on this one? Because I can. you got to learn to watch your mouth. If the Word of God says that life and death is found in the power of your tongue, then you've got to watch your tongue. You've got to let the Holy Spirit scrub your mouth out with soap. I know. Been there. You want me to get more personal? How do you feel? You tell me, how do you feel after the end of a day where all you've done is fuss and cuss and rant and rave and gripe and pout? How do you feel at the end of that day? That's why nobody wants to be around you. How do you feel? Does Does it really lift you up and encourage you? Worse than that, does it lift anybody up or encourage anybody around you? It takes a dusty mind and says, here, let's add dirt to it. Does it make sense? Makes about as much sense as wiping your nose before you sneeze. It don't make sense. Some of you will get that later. Speak life. Speak life. Number two, take proper inventory. Take proper inventory. This was interesting how he always told his disciples, hey, don't take extra stuff, and I'm an extra stuff taker. Right? If I, need, if I think I'll need three pairs of socks, I'm going to take seven, maybe eight. That's the way it is. But he says take proper inventory, which means don't put stock in the stuff. Put stock in what you believe and you know you have so that you have the faith that that you have enough still with you after you shake the dust off. Does that make sense? Because there are some people here that are holding on to stuff because you're afraid, even though it's dysfunctional, you're afraid to let go because that's all you've known. And you have to learn to let that go. Take proper inventory and realize that you have more life than that. Remember what you have and realize that that if greater is he who is in you than he who is in that world, then let it go. Let it go. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. A long time ago when I was going through some stuff and it was due to some things that happened to me, I thought, about two years later, I had a dream. It was, it was a creepy, weird dream. First I thought it was like Taco Bell or something. but No, it was serious. Cause I had a dream that I saw myself like struggling, like, 
trying to struggle and carry something, a heavy load. And the something I'm trying to carry was attached to this big rope. And that thing that was attached to the big rope was actually the dead, a dead me. And God said, there's some things that you've gone through. There's some things that's happened to you and it caused some death. Made some separation. Caused some change. And he said, let it go. That's not you anymore. Just as, just as we as, as people at a funeral, at the end of that funeral, we, we lower that body to get closure. We don't pick it back up and carry it everywhere we go. Why? Because that's not them anymore. And the stuff you've gone through, that's not you anymore. Learn from it. Grow from it. And move on. Faith is only as good as what you put the faith into. So if all you're putting faith in is the dead stuff, it's not going to work. Take proper inventory. Realize what you really do have. And what you have is more than what that dust can offer. The peace you have is greater than the dust that's collecting. Number three. Work the spiritual buddy system. If you've ever looked at Mark and Luke and the same, the same uh, story is found in both of those synoptic, all three of these synoptic Gospels. And if you look at them all, Jesus says in a couple of different times, He says, I'm sending you out two by two. Go, go two by two. You need a spiritual buddy. You need a spiritual buddy. You need a, there's a reason why Jesus sent them out two by two because when you get alone, when you, when you fall into this trap of being alone all the time where it's just you and your own thoughts now, every once in a while and somebody say amen some every once in a while it's kind of nice but after so long that enemy starts messing with your head and you'll believe all kinds of stuff it's not good it's not good that man should be It's okay every once in a while to take a time out, especially when you're going to be on purpose and be with God in that. You're not alone. But you need a spiritual buddy. You need somebody that can help support the situation. Every David needs a Jonathan. Every Elijah needs an Elisha. Every Paul needs a Barnabas. Deuteronomy says if one can put a thousand to flight, two can put two thousand, no, ten thousand you need somebody to watch your back you need to be like Bubba and Forrest Gump you sit with me and I'll sit with you we'll put our backs together and that way we don't have to sleep with our head in the mood some of y'all too holy to remember that movie you need somebody that can look at you and say dude you need some peace Let's pray together. Let's work this out. Let's talk this out. Let's step forward. Let's move on. Let's go. You need somebody. You need a true friend. If you don't have that, start with Christ. He'll give you one. Amen? You need that. You know, you've seen those people in town that the way that they're dressed and the way what they put on, you think that person either needs a true friend or a mirror. Somebody needs to bust that out and tell her that's wrong. Sometimes somebody needs to do that with us. Sometimes somebody needs to encourage you. You need someone who you can trust your innermost issues with and they'll encourage you when it's needed and they'll correct you when it's needed. You need a spiritual buddy. If you don't have that, begin praying for that. That's why Jesus said before he went to the cross, he says, now I call you friends. 
Now love one another as I have loved you. He knew they needed each other. It's not good that you be alone, I'm telling you. I'm closing with this. If you go on to read in that Matthew chapter 10, Jesus says to endure. Endure to the end and you shall be... Maybe you heard that. He actually says that twice in Matthew. Endure to the end and you shall be saved. He's not saying I'm dangling salvation over your head and hope you get it. What he's saying is, is I'm giving you this power and what you do with it is very important. And that word endure found in Matthew 22 is hupomoe. And it means this, it's not a passive resignation to fate and mere patience. But it is an active, energetic resistance to defeat to defeat what is coming against you and give you a calm and a brave endurance. It's a, I know that's a load there. But what he is saying is, is that you have to actually put energy and resistance and work that. And when you do, you're going to endure. What he's saying is, is don't lay down. And roll over and just let the enemy take you out. Don't give up. Don't give your peace away. Don't quit. Stay. Stay. Let's stand if you will. Some of us before we learn to walk, we've got to learn to stand. All right? Before we learn to run, we've got to learn to walk. Before we learn to walk, we've got to learn to stand. You have more with you than sometimes you realize. If you could just see spiritually all that you have, you're not going to feel like you need to be justified by anybody else other than Christ. You don't need certain things like that to bring you validation or identity. Mark my words, a lot of these people that are messed up with their identity and they're searching everywhere externally for that, they're searching everywhere but, but God and Christ and the Holy Spirit... For that, you mark my words, their identity will change about a hundred times. And they're just going to keep stirring up that same old dead dust. Shake it off. Be like the Apostle Paul when he got bit by the snake. He shook it off. He shook it into the fire. What they said about him when he was snake bit was true. When he was bit, when he was bitten by the snake, by the viper, all of the natives around said, Ooh, he must have done something really bad in his life. He must have been a murderer. And his mind could have said, Oh, they're right, because he was. It's who he used to be. That was his past. That was the unworthy. And he could have said, oh, you are right. I deserve this. But instead he shook it off and said, that's not me anymore. That's the dead me. I let that rope go. And I shake it off. And realize how much you really do have. You have enough life on the inside of you to give more life no matter what situation you're in. Right? In 1848, James Marshall was overlooking the building of a sawmill right next to a river in Colomo, California. And as he looked down, he saw something shiny in the water. Upon further investigation, he picks up a golden flake about the size of a, of a frosted flake 
the size of a cornflake and same thickness. He picks it up and he says, wow, is this what I think this is? And he took it to his supervisor. The supervisor says, wow, I think you just found gold. And they took it to another person and they said, yeah, I think you've just found gold. And then within a year later, there became a gold rush where it changed the entire footprint of our country all based on someone finding something of value that was this big. And you have more than that living on the inside of you. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you help us to shake some dust off. I pray, Lord, that you give us the authority and the ability today, right now, to shake that dust out of our head. Shake the dust out of our minds. Shake the dust out of all the cracks and the crevices that are cluttering and irritating up our spirit and our mind. I pray, Holy Spirit, you would blow into our mind like the wind and blow the dust out. For those that have had some rejection, I sincerely pray for them that you help them to see that the only validation they need is from you. For those that are still dealing with hurt, I pray that you apply the salve of the Holy Spirit to their life. Pray, God, that you move them up and move them on. I pray that peace would return back to them today, starting right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank you so very much. Ladies, don't forget, we'll have a real quick meeting after this, just after the next couple minutes.